There are so many awesome affordable Cine Prime lens sets on the market now, but today we are taking a look at a new challenger entering this competitive arena. These are the Nissi Athena Cinema Primes, and they are fast, compact, full frame primes that can produce some really nice images. They caught my eye back at NAB earlier this year because of their visual style. Their greeny yellow font and textured finish makes them look like tiny little versions of Ari's signature primes. But with them costing just a fraction of the signature primes, how do they actually perform? Well, let's take a look. We managed to film with these lenses a few different times, with the most notable being on our recent trip to Billingshurst to capture the wonderful Loxwood Joust, which is an excellent immersive medieval festival. Let us know what you think of the images down below though. Looking at these example images, we can see that they produce very pleasing, sharp, clean images, which makes them very versatile. The Nissi Athena lenses are T1.9 across the set, apart from the 14mm, which is T2.4. Considering this and the rest of their specification, it's actually quite impressive just how compact they are. They are seriously small and feel great in the hand. They also feel well balanced across a range of different camera configurations, which is thanks to their nice size and dense weight. We have used them across a few different camera bodies, and they feel great to operate handheld or rigged up with some kind of external focus control. The focus throw is pretty long at 300 degrees, which can be long for some owner operators, but at least you can be incredibly accurate with your focusing, especially if you are using some kind of focusing kit with the standard 0.8 pitch gears on the iris and focus barrels. They are available in PL mount, which we have in to check out, but they are also available in RF and E mount, which have a cool little feature, which we'll talk about in a bit. Nissi has also confirmed that there will be an L mount version coming soon, which is really exciting. These PL versions that we have in weigh roughly 800 grams each, and they are all very similarly sized as well, and have consistent gear placement for iris and focus control which will make using them on a gimbal very easy as you won't have to rebalance or position much. This is also the case if you use it on the Ronin 4D where you won't have to rebalance at all. Each lens features a 77mm filter thread apart from the 14mm, but they all have a pretty standard 80mm front diameter for clamp on matte boxes. The caps Nissi have used are actually quite nice. They push onto the front of the lenses and use this felt inside to provide a good amount of resistance to keep them on, and they also have nice markings to identify which lens is which when you're grabbing them out of your case. The rear caps are decent too, just be careful when handling these lenses, as their rear elements are quite exposed at certain focus distances. The lenses also have a dual focus scale with meters on the left and feet on the right. From our testing, the focus markings for this set are decently accurate, but could be better with some shimming. The lenses are available to buy as single focal lengths or as a five lens set, which also comes with a case to store and travel with them in. This isn't the best design case that I've seen as the lenses feel a bit loose. There is actually an extra slot in the case. So hopefully we see Nissi release a longer focal length to the set soon. If you want to keep up with the latest and greatest kit, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to buy anything you see in this video, or you want to get your hands on these lenses for yourself or any other kit for that matter, head over to cvp.com where our experienced team is waiting to help you. The Nissi Athena lenses have a rated image circle of 46 millimeters, which will cover plenty of full frame sensors and even some of the largest, such as the V-Raptor 8K VV, which has a 46.3 millimeter diagonal. They all cover really well, but the 14 millimeter does have heavy light fall off towards the corners comparatively to the rest of the set. Even when stopped down, we can still see fall off, but it's definitely better than wide open. With the rest of the set, coverage is incredibly impressive, and you should be happy with the performance, with pretty much all the full frame cameras on the market. If you want to see exactly how these lenses cover your chosen camera and format, head over to our lens coverage and camera comparison tool, link to which is in the description below. If you decide to grab the RF or E-mount versions of these lenses, one awesome feature they have is the ability to use drop-in rear filters. 
Nitty will be making a range of these, which include a circular polarizer, some diffusion options, single strength NDs, and probably the most important one, a variable ND. I think if you are buying these lenses and you know that you are going to be using them mainly on E or RF mount cameras, and you don't mind sacrificing the versatility that comes with PL mount, these versions will be a smart investment. This is because on the PL mount versions of the lenses, the rear element moves as you go from close focus to infinity. And as you can see, it extends quite drastically. This does differ from focal length to focal length, but with rear filter adapters or speed boosters, these rear element depths are going to cause issues. This means that our recommendation for the most part is that these will not work with these adapters or boosters. If you want to use a rear filter system, the RF or E-mount versions are the way to go. We haven't got any of Nissi's drop-in filters to test, but I've used Nissi's filters before and they performed well. So as long as they perform well, they could be good options to use with this system. I can see these versions of the lenses being very popular as there are plenty of E and RF mount cameras that don't have ND systems built into them. And this will be a really solid solution to get great optics with a variable ND at the back. Having this filter system built into the lenses also means you don't have to buy an adapter. You can just mount it directly onto your camera. Looking across the set, they all have pretty decent close focus distances, which are comparable to other full frame primes at their price. If you want to get better close focus though, Nissi create a close up lens that will work across all the lenses well, apart from the 14 millimeter. I just want to say before we get into the test that these lenses are pre-production units. So performance may improve with the full production ones. When it comes to focus breathing, each lens in the set is very well controlled, which is pretty impressive given their size. Though one thing that we did notice was that the distortion changes as you go through the focus range on every lens. This is most likely one of the compromises in the optical design to get them to perform like this in this size housing. Right, let's take a look at how the lenses can resolve our chart. For these, we are shooting on our Red V Raptor in 8K 16x9 and moving our camera further away from the chart to try and match framing as much as we can. Starting with the 14mm in the center, it really bites up at T4, with contrast and overall resolution increasing compared to wide open. Corner performance looks good though, but it does have some aberration. Performance improves as you stop down, but color aberration seems to stay. Overall though, performance looks good. The 25mm also resolves well in the center wide open, but we can see a touch of aberration which goes when stopped down to T2.8. It really does bite up at T4 in the center though. In the corners, we can see clear chromatic aberration, which improves as we stop down. It definitely falls off towards the corners when it comes to sharpness, but really bites up at T5.6. The 35mm performs very, very similarly to the 25mm in the center and in the corners. The 50mm has more spherical aberration than chromatic wide open in the center of frame. This really improves though at T2.8, and again, it really bites up at T5.6 here. In the corners, it has very minimal chromatic aberration and good resolving performance, which improves at T4. Lastly, the 85mm has the best performance wide open in the center of frame with the lowest amount of aberration and great resolving power. In the corners, this performance holds through with low chromatic aberration and good resolving power, even wide open. Overall, they perform very well. These lenses definitely lean more on the side of clean, sharp optics than RT, and this is evident here, especially with the 14, 50 and 85 mm. When it comes to distortion, both the 14 and 25 mm have some barrel, the 35 and 50 mm are very well corrected, and the 85 mm has slight pincushion distortion. Overall performance of these isn't bad though. It's quite light distortion and shouldn't affect your imagery too much. It's pretty impressive given their size and price. When it comes to bokeh performance, it does differ quite drastically between the different focal lengths. Let's start with the 14mm. Wide open, it has overcorrected bokeh with a defined edge and a touch of color around it. You can also see a touch of onion skinning as well. It's also decently circular in the center, but does become more misshapen towards the corners. Each lens uses a 10 blade iris that can form a decent shape even when stopped down. The shape of the bokeh is decently consistent across each lens. Wide open, the 25mm has similar performance to the 14mm, but has more irregular onion skinning and slightly more color on its edge. The shape is held well even towards the corners wide open, but it is better when stopped down. Next is the 35mm. Wide open, we can see heavy rainbow fringing on the edges and pupil occlusion warping towards the corners. It also looks a bit more defined than the previous lenses. Stopping down to T2.8 removes this heavy rainbowing, but some color is still present. There is also much more subtle onion skinning on this lens than the previous ones. 
the 50mm has the cleanest bouquet so far. We can see minimal texture, and while the edge is still defined, it has almost no color fringing. We can see some misshapen highlights towards the corner of frame, which improves as you stop down. And lastly, the 85mm looks incredibly similar to the 50mm. Overall, I think out of focus areas can look very nice with these lenses. Their bokeh is more overcorrected and defined, which means that bokeh can look quite textured or busy. I do wish they were a bit more consistent here, as I feel like out in the real world, you will be able to see a difference when you switch lenses. And while it's not a massive change, it will be noticeable. A lens's flare characteristic is a very subjective thing. For these examples, we grabbed a torch and blasted it down the barrel of each lens. We tried to keep the torch in the same position, but did move the camera as we changed focal length. For these tests, we are using a Kiptai RF to PO adapter on our Red V Raptor VV8K. All of the lenses have pretty similar flares apart from the 25mm, which looks a little different to the rest. It doesn't have the same circular flares we can see across the set. They all have some veiling glare, but overall, I think they look quite nice. The rainbow touches are very, very popular right now. The lenses have a slight color shift between them of around 2 to 300 Kelvin at its max and a tiny bit of tint, but not too much to make shooting between them too difficult. It's definitely still worth white balancing if you can when you switch lenses though. The Nissi Athena Primes have well and truly impressed me. I really did not expect this kind of performance from lenses of their price and physical size. While I don't have that much character, they are incredibly well controlled, clean and solid optics that will be incredibly versatile for an owner operator. They feel very well built, have solid mechanics and are incredibly compact given their image circle, t-stop and performance. They are especially impressive when you realize how aggressively priced they are at roughly 1,160 when purchased as a single focal length or about 5,355 for the five lens set. Though pricing can change, so head over to our website if you want to see current pricing. Their closest competition is probably the Dieselo Vespids, Dude Lens Mini Primes, and Irex Primes. They all have different pros and cons, of course, and which set you should grab will depend on what kind of image you like. We've looked at a good few of these in previous videos, links to which I've put in the description below. Lenses are always an incredibly personal choice. So if you are seriously considering buying these or any other lenses, I would suggest reaching out to us to book a demo today where you can come into one of our offices and get your hands on the lenses yourself. Details about that are down below. Anyway, let us know what you think of the Nissi Athena Primes and if you have any further questions down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.